Hello and welcome back to Forgotten City. You might be asking why the hell are we in the conversation with Malios or Quinctus? Apparently, uh, it might be in a bag. Mm, I will... Wait. Mm. Wait, we told that. You Just like the description. Like okay. That. I'll be going Which? now. Now we are supposed to talk with Claudia. That's maybe that's why it didn't work earlier because I just tried talking to her without talking to Alios. Please! I'm not supposed to be in here. My really talk. What business could you possibly have with me? Okay. How would you like some help getting back at Malios? This is what we didn't get earlier for some hmm. reasons. An intriguing proposition. Go on. I don't think Malios is who he says he is. Hmm. Perhaps you're not as silly as those clothes make you look. What makes you say that? Just a hunch. I was hoping we could figure out his true identity together. You know, I may have. The very thing you're looking for. Some time ago, when he still cared for me, he wrote me a love letter. Only, he used the wrong name. Now, addressing one's wife by the wrong name is not unheard of among philandering Romans. But in this case, the name he got wrong was his own. I confronted him about it and he stammered through some incoherent response. I'll let it go, eventually, and yet... questions have lingered in the back of my mind ever since. But... wait a minute. Why exactly are you helping me? I... want to force him to withdraw from the election. To withdraw? Listen. I may not be Penelope to his Ulysses, but to ruin his plans to become a magistrate? You must think me quite mad. Oh, God damn it! Get out of here at once. Demetrius, come quickly. We're being robbed. Okay, we have to reset. Actually... <laughs> I can load. <laughs> Yes, I will reload the game. Since now we know what to do, there's no reason for us to do a whole day over and over again. And right now it's more than... Uh, right, we have to wait for gal galeries to be done. He should be done in... In a short while. No, nope. What is the meaning of this? Okay, no, nope. Nope. I just wanted to bathe, maybe. No, nope. Okay, I will save once he's available, just in case. So we don't have to wait. Uh, I'm sure he was... Okay. Uh, your Quinctus. Uh, note. I like yep. That. I'll be going now and I'll save. I save. Thank you. Now for Claudia. Why is she locked in here? Yes, 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 you don't like me here, I look funny, I don't care. Can we talk? How would you like mm. getting back at Malios? I don't think who, mm. who he is. Just a hand. Now I, I, but we women have to stick together. I couldn't agree more. One hand washes the other, as they say. It seems our interests are aligned. I imagine knowing his true identity will give me the leverage I need to manage him appropriately. But first, I need you to do something for me. What do you want? I want you to bring me some wine. 
Just one small urn should do it. Oh, don't look at me like that. I know this must be hard for you to wrap your sweet little pleb head around. So what do you need me to spell out? Actually, I don't have any questions. So you'll help me? You don't like questions. I have some wine right here. Thank you. Here's the letter. Quink to the beloved Claudia. For a time, I despaired at the thought of being trapped here for the rest of my life. But then I met you and discovered that as long as I am with you, I am exactly where I should be. Mere words cannot express my affection for you, and so I will perform a grand gesture in your honor. I will become the city's magistrate so that I may govern with wisdom and strength, with you by my side. Now, perhaps you can tell me who Quinctius really is. According to this bounty letter from Emperor Nero, he's the person who started the fires in Rome last year. What? He's... Oh no, that's... Um, quite a lot more serious than I imagined. I only wanted some leverage over him, not to destroy him. Give me that immediately. Nobody else must know. Hmm... Oh, I think I'll hang on to it. What? No. You... you tricked me, you mendacious little Sturkus. I didn't lie to you. It was a lie of a mission. You were planning this all along and you deliberately concealed it. May Jupiter cut you down. Typical. Okay, I'll be going now. I curse you. I curse your life and mind and memory. May you be unable to walk or eat or drink. May this drag you to the depths. This is outrageous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just in case that they die, I will save again. Hey, Maliolus. There he is. Oh, Quinctus. Who again? What is it now? Uh, yes, sir, Quinctus, maybe. My name is. Ma mm. I Seriously? I want you to do a troll. Because I know you're Quinctus, your wife gave me a love letter, and Nero wants you dead. I... Uh, so... It finally caught up with me. I suppose that makes you... What? One of Nero's assassins? No, I am not. Fortunately for you... So... You're not going to kill me? Not if you withdraw your from the election immediately and release everyone in depth bondage to you. Oh, so much work and money. Oh, well, if I do it, you'd let me live? I will. Fine. Ruling this cesspit of a city would have been beneath me anyway. I'll have Demetrius notify the priestess of my withdrawal and release those two from debt bondage. There. You got what you wanted. Now, please, leave my villa and never speak to me again. Finally! Okay. Ah. Uh. So there's that. Okay, the game froze. That's the only thing left right now. I know. We can make it happen. In here. Hello, little goose. Yes, I'm trying, okay? I have to wait for them to finish.
Oh, when will it disappear? Let's save. Okay, I have to. Nominate him. Oh. Um. Is she here? Yep. A new faith. Yep, uh, what's the status of the election? And I nominated another okay. candidate. I would like to meet. Oh, what a good Galerius. He is a virtuous and decent man, after all. I happen to agree he'd make a wonderful magistrate. Okay, let's talk about something else. I'm be going now. Now, what's left? Figure out how to get. Okay. Let's try doing the election straight away. Straight away. Um, it, it'll be why can we start the election? As I said I'm planning to hold. I just want to get it off. Calling early may prevent conflict between the voters. Mm. Yes, I have overheard some rather unpleasant mm -hmm. arguments. The last thing we need here is additional conflict. Very well, I'll get things started right away. Thank you very much. Citizens, it is time. Let us meet to elect our magistrate. Hopefully he won't he will play along. Because this will grant us the last plaque. What you drinking? Hmm? <laughs> I can I keep hearing him turn his head. Well I can take part in the voting. At least I can watch and listen. Are waiting for someone? Citizens, we have a quarate body of voters gathered here to elect the city's magistrate. The candidates are Sextus Sentius Imperiosus and late nominee Gallus Galerius Pelva. Marcus Maliolus Gurgis withdrew his candidacy earlier today. As agreed, we shall dispense with ballots, and candidates will abstain from voting. Let's make this quick. As I say your name, call your vote. I'll start with you, Horatius. Sentius, of course. Georgius. Galerius. He saved the life of my dear friend Fabia. Dacius. Sentius. Virgil. The man who put a stop to the threats I've been receiving. Galerius. Rufius. The man who treated my rheumatism, Galerius. Citizens, you have made your decision. We did it! Your new magistrate is Gallus Galerius Helva. What? It has been decided. Magistrate Galerius, would you like to make a brief address? Uh, um, I just want to say, this isn't something I ever wanted. Now that you've put your trust in me, I'm going to do everything I can not to let you down. I'll need some time to put together a list of the changes I want to make around here. 
but I promise you, there will be changes. My first order is that Dooley is to be freed. Yes. Horatius, release him from his cell immediately. Please. Wait, do I need to say please? I suppose not. That's it. You can all get on with your day. Nothing else to see here. Move along. Let she disappeared. Uh, let's free Dooley. Let's get the last plaque. And then we will visit Pluto slash Hades slash Anubis. Well, Horatio, get in here. Come on, open up. Fortune smiles on you today, Julius. Magistrate Galerius here has ordered your release. You're going to let me out of here? I'm sorry it took so long, my friend. And it wouldn't have happened at all if it wasn't for a newcomer. So be sure to offer your thanks when you can. I will. I will. Thank you, Galerius. I'm so happy. I'd love to stay and chat, but I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Why don't you go to the baths? Then tell Georges I said you could have some new clothes. Then I want you to go home and rest. I'll speak with you soon, Dooley. Yay, we did. Salve again, friend. I went and did as you asked, and why are we talking? It nothing? worked. How is it possible that you? Uh, okay, I'm busy right oh, now. Uh, of course. Where's the leader? His. Uh, hello. I'm Dooley. Magistrate Galeria said I should thank the newcomer. Are you the newcomer? Uh, yes, that's me. Oh, it Let's is not you. overcharge his brain. Then, thank you. You're a big helper. I was locked up, but they let me out again. I'm so happy. You're welcome. You can have my shiny plaque if you want, and maybe you can help me find my treasure. My friend Hannibal used to look after me, and he said he always would. But then he died. Did we find it? But before that, he told me, if anything ever happened to him, I had to find something very precious. And it did. What was in there? Was it gold and pearls and shiny things? Do you... Do you think you could share some with me? No, but I learned some very important things in there, and I think they might help us even more. I'm confused. Hannibal said it was a precious secret. It's not a treasure. It is precious, just not in the way we thought. Oh. Alright. I trust you. Oh, look over there. Something shiny. Is it treasure? That is laid quickly. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe no one will mind if I just take that. Don't you dare. But that escalated very quickly. Oh my god. So Dooley is a, li a liability after all. 
But now we have the plague. Plague. So we can be done with that. We can talk to the one true ruler of this place. friend uh, I'm all to this right now thank you come on come on come on come on I don't want to lose any more time than it's necessary I know I'm trying put a lot of pressure on me, you know that? Yep, that's all things we are left with. Oh, but before we get in, I have to say it. Just in case. Oh, of course. Okay, yeah, I don't want to talk with you. Like with that, I'm out of here. Yes, uh, I'll talk to him. I can't. You, I'll never well, you don't, if I don't know you, maybe I can solve I, your problem. What if no, I can pull it to wherever you are? Saint Tillum, my love. I'm sorry. Oh, Pierce, no! I what happens okay. now? Okay. Last one. I feel a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> to be honest. Especially since the door closed behind us. Oh well. Really? Hades. Osiris. Pluto. So now you are Pluto? Oh, so it was Pluto. Before that, it was Hades. Okay, I get it. Before that, you were Osiris. And even before that, you were Nargo. I didn't expect that, I have to admit. Nergal to the Sumerians, Osiris to the Egyptians, Hades to the Greeks, and Pluto to the Romans. But the one constant through it all has been my title, God of the Underworld. 
And I've been watching you with curiosity, mortal, ever since your arrival. You're unlike the others, aren't you? And what is more, you carry a weapon that was never intended for mortals to wield, and you do it so brazenly. But there will be time for your reckoning later. First, as a reward for undoing the desecration of my obelisk, I will allow you to satisfy your curiosity. Ask what you will. What's your story? My story is many thousands of years long. You will need to be more specific. What do you wish to know? You are God? It is a matter of perspective. God is a label I was given by you mortals, not one I gave myself. Your ancestors revered me because to them, my knowledge and technology made me incomprehensibly powerful. Just as you might seem so to an insect. But despite all that, there are rules even I must obey. Why do you look and sound like a man? My kin and I all adopted this form long ago, so that we might better understand and communicate with your kind. In time, we grew fond of the sensory delights it affords. Desire, joy, ecstasy, even rage and sorrow, while in a quiet taste, can be addictive. May I see your true form? No. Long ago, I swore to Persephone that I would remain in this form for as long as we remained among your kind. I must honor that. Who is the woman on your left? This is my beloved. Like me, she has been known by many names. Eresh Kigel to the Sumerians, Isis to the Egyptians, Persephone to the Greeks, and Proserpina to the Romans. Or perhaps you might know her as the goddess of springtime. The cycle of life and renewal. Okay. Your gaze lingers too long. Who is that on your right? That is my servant. You would have met by the river, though she wears many faces and goes by many names. Kumu Tabal to the Sumerians, Kurti to the Egyptians, Charon to the Greeks, and Charon to the Romans. Her role is to ferry souls between the mortal world and this one, and to make their transition as seamless as possible. For that, she earned herself the infamous, if erroneous, moniker, the Ferryman. You will talk more later. For now, ask your questions. Okay. As you wish. What is this place? It has come to be known simply as the Underworld. And it exists because of a wager I made long ago. What was the wager you made? That is a long story. One that began over 3,000 years ago and continues to this day. About the thousand you coins, see, okay. <laughs> long ago, my kin and I set out from our home on Elysium to search for other forms of life among the stars. We discovered your planet and witnessed your kind evolving from primates into something lawless and barbaric. You all but destroyed yourselves, your two short lives being extinguished by violence and ignorance and disease. Yet Proserpina saw raw potential in you, and persuaded the rest of us it would be squandered without our intervention and stewardship. So we revealed ourselves to your people in a place called Sumer. We offered guidance in agriculture, toolcraft, and law, and you called us gods. For a time, you flourished, but soon you were too many for us to oversee. And as you spread from that cradle of civilization, we saw something disturbing. We had sown the seeds of dependency and confusion, and soon you returned to your old ways of violence and ignorance, this time in our name. My kin had seen enough and gave up on your kind, condemning you as barbaric and chaotic scarcely more than animals. We began preparations to return to Elysium, our home world, a utopia unspoilt by conflict and unimaginable in its beauty. But my Proserpina could not bear to abandon your kind without guidance, and knowing it would force the rest of us to leave her behind, she made an extraordinary sacrifice. She gave up her immortality 
to descend permanently to the ranks of humankind. And so she began her inescapable trajectory toward death. Horrified, I acted swiftly. I placed her in suspended animation in a deep, frozen sleep to prevent age and sickness from claiming her. And then I pleaded with Proserpina's father, who the Romans called Jupiter, to bring her with us to Elysium. It was and is my hope that once there, we might one day learn to undo what she has done to herself. But he refused. I did everything I could to persuade him, but he would not relent. He would rigidly uphold his final pronouncement. Humans were unworthy of ascension to Elysium, and no exceptions would be made. But seeing that I was aggrieved, he proposed a wager, the terms of which were as follows. If even one human city could prove itself capable of living without sin for a single year, then Proserpina and all of humanity would be permitted to join us in Elysium. My part would be to remain behind, the last of my kind, to watch over you without interfering, and to sit in silent judgment. And so my reward has been to languish here, enduring a 3,000 year winter, waiting for the day your kind proves itself worthy of her faith in you so that I might take her with me to Elysium and unthaw my goddess of springtime. And here I am, after all this time, still waiting. Where are you, Ken? There were also gods who, like me, have been known by many names. But perhaps you knew them by their Roman names. Our leader, Jupiter, as well as Neptune, Saturn, Juno, Minerva, Mars, Venus, Apollo, Diana, Vulcan, Vesta, Ceres, and of course, my beloved Persephone. Who built the city? As the first wave of your kind arrived from Sumer, I had them build a city in their own fashion, so that they might be comfortable and recreate their lives here. I had them build the entrance as a vertical shaft leading to baths, to cleanse them of the sins of their former lives, and to prevent escape. I watched wave after wave of Sumerians arrive, and as their civilization declined over the centuries, they were replaced by Egyptians. Of course, believing themselves to be the superior civilization, the Egyptians promptly built over what had been built before, and made all the same mistakes. After another thousand years, the Greeks began to arrive and then the Romans, and they all did the same thing. They built upon the underworlds of their predecessors, renamed their gods, and ensured their foundations were forgotten. How did you decide who comes here? To ensure the wage was fair, it was important that my subjects were chosen at random. To this end, I had my servant distribute a thousand tokens fashioned from silver, a rare element at the time across all of Sumer. Whoever died while in possession of one of them would be located by my servant and ferried to this place, with no memory of how they arrived. As the tokens were discovered, they were traded, smelted, and fashioned into trinkets, and eventually coins, spreading to Egypt like seeds on the wind. Later, when they spread to Greece, they would come to be known as Charon's Obol, or as coins for the ferryman. Some placed coins in the mouths of their dead, hoping they would awaken here, though they had no way of knowing which coins were fashioned from the original tokens. In fact, almost all of the tokens are accounted for, only two remain. And so after this wave destroys itself, as it is destined to do, your kind will have squandered the last of its potential to ascend beyond this rock and Persephone is along with it. How did humans learn about the Underworld? It is a regrettable story. One of the first men who came to this place was a king of Sumer and a troublemaker. To be rid of him, I returned him to his people on the condition that my servant erased his memories of this place. But the erasure did not take completely and he told stories of this place as if describing memories of a dream. 
His tales were committed to writing, which came to be known as the Epic of Gilgamesh, and his words were twisted and distorted over generations. Later, the Egyptians would adapt Sumer's stories of the underworld, making them wildly intricate and labyrinthine. Their Book of the Dead and Book of Gates bore less and less resemblance to this place in their priests' pursuit of profit. Then, when the Greeks began to arrive, they proved far more cunning. And in a series of incidents that will not be repeated, five of them escaped. A warrior named Heracles, two kings named Sisyphus and Theseus, a poet named Orpheus, and a Trojan named Aeneas. They each told embellished tales of this place, how to get here, and how to escape. And so from Sumer to Egypt, Greece to Rome, your kind has always told each other stories about this place, though each story contained only a seed of truth. Of course. Okay, I'm responsible for the golden rule. That is merely the name your people have given to it, but yes, it is my doing. Why turn people into gold? That is a story dating back to the very first wave. After the Sumerians finished building their city, the self-declared ruler threw a banquet to celebrate. Now this man was unmarried, and many women were vying to become his wife, a prestigious position of power and influence in a new world. Of all the women, two were particularly ambitious. Both were beautiful, and both arrived at the banquet wearing eye-catching dresses and painted faces, their hair woven in elaborate fashion. The first woman, recognizing that she would require an advantage to win the ruler's affection, draped herself in jewelry, ornate necklaces, bracelets and rings fashioned from gold. Seeing this ostentatious display, the second woman grew envious, for she had no such jewelry at her disposal. She prayed aloud to any gods that would listen to cover her in gold, and when her prayer went unanswered, she took matters into her own hands. While the others indulged at the banquet, the second woman summoned the first for a discussion in a quiet place. She checked that nobody was watching and pushed her rival from the top of the ziggurat where she broke her neck on the rocks below. But I was watching, and I decided to answer her prayer. I took the golden bow left behind by Diana, and I shot that woman in the heart covering her from head to toe in a layer of molten gold. And I left her to stand there, that she might serve as a grim reminder of what befalls those who sin in my domain. But that was not enough, for the entire city was tainted by her sin, and the wager could no longer be won. So I had no choice but to wipe the slate clean. I gilded them all, to make way for a new wave, and began the wager again. And to this day, each of them, and all who came after, line the halls of this city, inanimate but conscious, suspended in time with only their sight and hearing preserved, so they may bear witness to and lament the folly of your kind for eternity, the silent golden sentinels. So you're responsible for destroying all these lives. I give your kind a second chance at life, as well as ample warning about my law. And when you disobey, and you always disobey, you force my hand, bringing terrible suffering upon yourselves. And so you ask if I am the one destroying your lives. And I say, no, you destroy yourselves. I and merely the means by which you do it. Where did these golden balls come from? When my kin departed, they left behind many relics which I inherited. A consolation prize of sorts. The golden bow originally belonged to one of my kin, who the Romans called Diana. As my collection of golden statues grew, I chose the most ferocious among them and equipped them each with a duplicate of her bow and tasked them with hunting down the Forsaken at my behest. They became known simply as Furies. What do you consider a sin? 
I've always considered that the cornerstone of morality is the ability to determine right from wrong on one's own. No attempt to lay out rules like your Code of Hammurabi or your Twelve Tables of the Roman Republic can ever cover all possible scenarios. This should come as no surprise to you, since the core principle has been expressed in many forms by many of your civilizations. The Egyptians made a rudimentary attempt with do to the doer to make him do. The Greeks refined it with avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. The Roman Stoics added, treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Even the so-called cultists hiding among you often say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It is the simplest of concepts, and each one of you is born with the faculties required to apply it to any situation. Yet none of the peoples who expressed this rule were able to uphold it. Curious, is it not? The head principle is not as easy to apply as it sounds. <laughs> For you, perhaps. How do you know when people sin? I'm able to commune with all of the statues in the city. Their ears are my ears, and their eyes are my eyes. Is Proserpina connected to the statues in the same way? If she was still conscious, I suppose she could, but she's not. Why do you ask? No reason. Then what an odd question. I've seen some terrible things here that you didn't consider a sin. How could you let them happen? Do you plan to speak in sweeping generalizations? Or are you going to give me an example? Suicide. Ah, oh, yes. The dead bondsman. Taking one's own life is a self-directed act. It is not one that is done to others, however they may be affected by it. Therefore, it cannot be said that one who commits suicide has done anything to others. That seems like extremely true interpretation of the rule. Applying this rule always requires us to interpret the meaning of the words. A literal interpretation helps to minimize the ambiguities of your primitive language. If our language is full of ambiguity, doesn't that make the rule inherently subjective and unreliable? Hmm. Supposing you are right, then my law has been broken. And I should turn you all to gold immediately. Is that what you want? Can I save? No, I can't. <laughs> no, of course not. Never mind. Huh. Now tell me, what other sins do you believe I have overlooked? Can I really not save? Prize gouging for life saving medicine. The merchant. How is that inconsistent with the rule I've outlined? He wouldn't want someone else to demand an outrageous price for the medicine he needed if he was dying. I disagree. Having watched this merchant, that is precisely what he would expect from others, and he would be quite capable of paying the price anyway. You can know what he would expect, you're just speculating. Applying this rule always requires speculation to some degree. It requires us to ask what another person would want if they found themselves in another situation. <sighs> now tell me, what other sins do you believe I have overlooked? That bondage. You speak of the moneylender. How is that inconsistent with the rule? He wouldn't want to be trapped in a 30-year labor contract because of a loan. And he would never have signed a contract pledging his labor for 30 years. All he did was enforce the terms of a contract signed voluntarily by others. The whole concept of debt bondage, like slavery, is unethical. It's illegal under international law where I'm from. Ignoring your irritating sense of moral superiority. This is interesting. I'm curious, how do people escape poverty where you from? Yeah, yeah, it's customary to take out a loan to buy a house and some places to pay for an education. I see. And how long might it take such a person? To 30 years. Their debt? It depends. Typically decades, sometimes their entire life. I fail to see how your system of loans is significantly different to a debt bondsman signing over his labor for 30 years. It's not the same thing. Hmm. It is, but... Supposing you are right, then my law has been broken, and I should turn you all to gold immediately. Is that what you want? 
No. Huh. Now tell me, what other sins do you believe I have overcome? This is not going fine. Experiments on the golden statues. The midwife and the palace, yes. How is that inconsistent with the rule? She wouldn't want to be experimented upon if she was killed. The rule is do unto others, meaning other people. Those statues are something else now. Bloodless shadows, mere shapes of their former selves. They are forsaken. What happens to them is no concern of mine. I see. Now tell me, what other sins do you believe I have overlooked? Abduction. Abduction? You mean the magistrate imprisoning his daughter in the cistern, I take it. He did so because she sought to escape. A sin I take particularly seriously. Better that he stops her from escaping, albeit brutishly, than I have to wipe out this entire city to punish her. Wouldn't you agree? I disagree. Hmm. Suppose hey. you're right, then my law has been broken, and I should turn you all to gold immediately. <laughs> Is that what you want? It's like arguing huh. with a child. Now tell me, <laughs> what other sins do you believe I have overlooked? It's no wonder people say the gods are cruel. This just shows how unreliable and subjective your moral code is. You're no better at judging right from wrong than any human. Do you honestly think you could do better? No, but that's my point. Nobody's grasp of right and wrong is so perfect that they can be trusted with all this power. You've become a tyrant. I should strike you down for that. And if you did, you will be proving my point. Now, did you have any other questions before your reckoning? Very well. That's all the questions. Good. Then now it is time for your reckoning. Only, it seems, something is wrong. It has long been within my power to see into the hearts of mortals and weigh their deeds in life. But, when I peer into you, I see only a blank slate, as if you did not exist until you appeared in this city. How is this possible? Charon, where did you find this one? I do not remember ferrying you. How did you come here? I am from the future. If that is true, then I sense the intervention of someone powerful. How did you come to be in this time, mortal? Who brought you here? He cannot know. I was hoping you could tell me. I do not know. My kin departed long ago, and Proserpina has slumbered for 3,000 years. I guess you that means you don't know everything that goes on in here. Tread lightly, mortal. Enough of this. It seems I will need to put your reckoning on hold for now. But answer this. No! <laughs> Why have you come here? What is it you seek? I would like to put an end to the golden rule. Yeah. <laughs> your hubris is amusing, so I will allow you to make your case. But I warn you. If you anger me, or waste my time with lies or wrong-headed arguments, you face death here. No so pressure at all. Me, why should I put an end to the so-called golden rule? Mm, how can you... The golden rule is corrupting this city and ensuring you'll never win the wager. How so? And be specific. You have made a grave allegation, and I expect you to back it up. Mali <laughs> 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 also has trapped people in that bondage. Uh... Rufus has become so paranoid that he's jumping at shadows like Virgil sexually. He did that in pain. And, uh, yeah. He is a volatile and confused fellow, that one. This is his price coaching. 
gorging for life-saving medicine because he knows nobody can take it by force. True. I have witnessed him doing that. And Marius has trapped people in their bondage by convincing them that rebelling would break the law. His cruelty does seem to grow greater by the day. That's all the examples I can think of. Pathetic. You will need to do a lot better than that. Oh, come on. How can you expect us to live with sin if you can do it yourself? <laughs> that is a very serious accusation, mortal. What sin have I committed? What evidence do you have to support it? Didn't you abduct Persepin? No, that's no. Trap people in the city against their will. These people were all dead when my servant found them. I gave them a second chance at life. Would you prefer to have simply ceased to exist? Maybe. Then you still have the option to end your life should you wish, and you are no worse off than if I had not intervened. Accordingly, I reject your argument. You've given terrible punishments to hundreds of people, some for minor sins and some who committed no sins at all. Every one of those people was guilty of failing to ensure their peers lived virtuously. They failed collectively, and so they were punished collectively. The Romans understand this, as did the Greeks before them. Where well, I'm from, collective punishment is considered one of the most egregious crimes there is. Uh... How unfortunate that we are not where you are from. If our positions were reversed, you wouldn't want me to punish you for the sins of other people. Ah, but I am a god, and you are a mortal. Why would you expect me to treat you as I treat my own kind? You are not a peer. You are not a respected equal. Let me ask you this. Do you treat insects as you wish to be treated? Actually, yes. Do you care for their well-being as you would your fellow man? Do you ensure they have food and shelter and protection from predators? Do you give them rights? No. Of course not. Because that would be absurd. Just as it would be absurd for me to treat your kind as equals. Your kind and mine can't be so different, given that you're in love with one of us. My love for her does not mean I am not superior, now that she is mortal. That sounds arrogant. Perhaps you're not as different from humans as you think. <laughs> For a moment, I thought you might have been building to a point, but I see now you are just not getting in through him. Creature. Yes, I am. If you're doing this for love, you should know that Persepina doesn't love you. Uh, no. He cannot know. Huh. I see what you are doing. You are trying to undermine the one thing keeping me anchored here. You are playing a dangerous game. My apologies, I misspoke. You have no idea how close you just came to eternal torment, mortal. You will need to do better than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you really think you can wound me, a god? I surely hope so. Primitive weapon? Yeah, let's find out, shall we? Pathetic. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I did take it! Whoa. God damn it. Ah! Okay, but that's the final of the bit for today. We're gonna finish this to the next day. For now, thank you very much, stay alive, and see you soon. Bye!